uh, it will be a same nucleus, right? Uh, um, so nuclear is there to work. <laughs> and uh, we are um, we're very privileged that we have electricity so at least we can follow the service um, on the screen. Uh, we go to, I'm going to invite you to, to stand and go inside the podium as we begin um, our LinkedIn journey.
and reading from Messiah chapter 58, beginning at verse 1. Shout it aloud, do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the descendants of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways, as if they were a nation that does, does what is right, and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions, and seem eager for God to come near them. Why have they fasted, they say? And you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves, and you have not known it? Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please, and exploit all workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife, and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today, and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for people to humble themselves. Is it only for bowing one's head like an leaf? And for lying in sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice and to untie the cords of the yoke? To set the oppressed free? and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe them, and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you. And the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call out, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourself in half of the hungry, and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness, and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in the sun-scorched land, and will strengthen your throne. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will, rise, will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets that fail. Hear the word of the Lord.
our story and we please do not let me see for where your treasure is there your heart will be also this is the gospel of christ in the name of god his father son and holy spirit amen <coughs> so now, It's good to be back. Uh, it's very hot in Ghana. Um, very happy to have a little bit of a breeze. Um, I couldn't have finished my sermon today without Jenny, but not my fault. Um, don't worry, I didn't give her a sermon. She had it well thought out. Today we begin our Lenten journey together. And it's always very fascinating to hear uh, a few days as we lead up to Lent. Wow, well, what are you going to be giving up? And uh, what are you going to be more conscious about? And there are very modern things before this to be very strict, you know. I remember growing up not, not eating meat during Lent. And that was a, it was quite a struggle. I just couldn't wait for Easter Sunday. <laughs> Because at least there would be like a lamb chop or something to eat. But things have changed over the years. Now it's about how much time you spend on Facebook, or people will take, many of my friends have put a message on Facebook saying, I'm taking a, a sabbatical from, from uh, Facebook, so I won't be checking for the next 40 days my Lenten discipline. And of course, yesterday we didn't have fag makes. Uh, I, I apologize for that. Uh, but yesterday would have been the day where you were meant to clean out your cupboards of all um, yummy things, like in sweets and you have to recall pancakes with all kinds of nice things and then your cupboards should be sort of very sparse, no luxuries, no chips, no gas. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But we begin this Lenten journey. It's an annual journey that we take uh, to the center of the Christian year. Now the church year doesn't start on the 1st of January. The church year begins on Easter Sunday when we bring a new candle into the church and bring a new light into the church. So it's those three great days. Good Friday and Easter Sunday and Good Friday, Holy Saturday and Easter Sunday that we are really journeying together. Today is about too many things, actually. There are so many things that the scriptures tell readings are so vast and it's very difficult to sort of focus well what exactly is it that we should be looking at when we look at all the things said for today. Fasting I know is one that we don't really as Anglicans it's not a discipline of ours. Fasting is one of the so-called Lenten disciplines and then there's prayer and there's almond giving and I think people instinctively know how to pray we all say, oh, I don't want to pray. It's very difficult to get people out here to even read the prayer, say prayer. But no, 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 I'll do so. I'll read the Bible. Don't ask me to pray. But when you are in trouble, when you are alone, and you really have no other way to go, then suddenly you know how to pray. Even if it's just a popcorn cake. Oh, Lord, please help me today. I really don't know which way to turn. Our prayers, maybe that's what the church is for. Our prayers don't need to be as beautiful as, uh, as they are put out in the prayer book or in the liturgy. Because that's not how we pray, that's not how we communicate. We don't say all these wonderful flowery words to God. We say what is on our heart because we are desperate and don't know which other way to turn. That's when we need God. And then when we are worshipping or we are saying the creeds, then we are giving praise and honor to God. So we know how to pray. Alms giving, we know how to do that also. Growing in generosity, we do that unaware sometimes. Some of us need to learn how to do that more. And then there are others who just give and give and give all the time and they run out like they are so giving that they don't often get to be up again. And so very often people will say, well, I 
I've come to church to be full for the weekend because I have given so much of myself, not only in material goods, but we've given, we've given so much of ourselves this past week, 10 days in Ghana, was exhausting. I was studying for it. My day was days in the evening, days in the evening, days in the evening. That was it. And it was outside. Only one day we went outside. And then we were in the bus for two hours, um, going to the Cape Coast in Ghana, where the slave trade started. And we literally went into the dungeons of the castle where slaves were kept for three months and then put on ships and taken to the American. And we learned there that while the slaves were at the bottom, a chapel was built on top of the castle. And so we, we were, it was an ugly place to be at, actually. It was worse than Patrick today, but a very ugly, deceptive place to be in. Um, and now we have to take some responsibility for that and act again about the things that just should be said to other people, to other Christians, to other human beings about us. But back to, to, to actually where we stand. So we know how, how to give. But fasting, being that we are not so good at. Fasting tends to be harder for us to get our grip on. Because often the question is, how if I am hungry, am I helping somebody else? And it's a very reasonable question to ask. If I'm hungry, I give my sandwich to someone else. <coughs> and I'm hungry, how am I, how am I helping? Because I can't do that all the time. If I give, you know, if I give all the time, and I'm hungry, how am I helping others? Of course, you, your blood sugar will drop, you will feel a little irritable, um, and you know, when you're irritable, then you lash out at people. Well, that's certainly what some people do if, uh, if they haven't eaten. That might work for some of us. Some of us can fast. If you think about our Muslim brothers and sisters who fast from sunrise to sunset, it is a discipline for them, but that is not really a discipline for us. I think when we read from the prophet Isaiah today, we can gain some deeper meaning of what it means <coughs> to fast. And a few weeks ago when Lena was here, the same pattern was read actually. And she began to unpick some of that of what Isaiah was saying. Because Isaiah says, I heard it said that the purpose of, sorry, Isaiah doesn't say that. I heard it said that fasting and then helps us to return to normalcy. We don't actually know what normalcy is or normality is. We don't. Because things have changed over the years. And what I think is normal today, my mom might think is completely different because she was raised in a different era. So Lent is calling us to go back to what God is saying is normal. And in Isaiah, we hear God saying through the prophet Isaiah, is not this the fast that I choose? What do you think is fasting? Giving up food, giving up the internet, giving up the red wine or red meat. God is saying, is this not the fast that I choose? To loose the bond of injustice, to undo the thumbs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. Is it not to share your bed with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them? And not to hide yourself from your own family. And if you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in darkness and your gloom will be light in many days. That is what God is looking for us, looking for from us when God speaks about fasting to break the chains of oppression. To feed the homeless and the poor. And we will find that during then, people will, will do that. Very similar to, to Christmas. We all want to give um, and support and help charity.
and we lift the sea sound, and we forget about all the other 364 days of the year. But Christmas, let's do it. It's nice, you know, at least they're going to have a new year. They need a new year every day, not just from Christmas. And so, at the same time, when we call to fast, it doesn't necessarily mean that we take time or we take, we don't, we don't take sustenance, we don't take food. What God is asking is exactly that. To lose the bottom of the iceberg and to undo the top of the iceberg. And that's difficult. It's difficult. Because if you're going to speak out against injustice, you are not going to be popular. And who doesn't want to be popular? We all want to be liked. Well, this week, while I was gone, the Church of England was not liked. Because it turns out that the Church of England actually had shares in the shipping company that shipped the slaves from Ghana to, um, to the Americans. Oh, and you could see us all just wanting to distance ourselves from the Church of England. <laughs> We're like, oh, no, no. And then, then what happens? We all came from the Church of England. So we are complicit. We are part of the problem. And that was a bit of hope for us to swallow. But that is what God is talking about when we talk about injustice. To say, yes, we did wrong. And not just walk away. Please forgive us. To say, yes, we did wrong. And then to ask how we can fix it. And we have examples all over the world of how people have admitted, countries have admitted, we should not have come into your country, we should not have distorted the Bible, we should not have made slaves of people, we should not have segregated black people from white people, we should not, we should not, we should not, and yet we have done it. And very few people have said that they are sorry, and very, and, and even fewer people have said, how do I make it right? And that is what God is saying. Is this, this is the kind of fasting I'm expecting of you. To speak out against this and to do something about it. So, though fasting isn't really about what we are giving up, perhaps it's an opportunity for us to gain insight and to grow in compassion and in understanding of what and who truly sustains our lives. What and who truly sustains our lives? Yes, food does help. Water does help. But we read the passages and we will read them again now. Jesus goes into the desert for 40 days and nights without food and water. I don't know if you saw that there was a testimony of me. We tried to do the same thing and we died. So I won't encourage any of you to be doing that. To be fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. We are not God. We are not. But who truly gives us sustenance when things are difficult, when we are going through really challenging times? For many of us, living in this country right now, if we didn't have our faith, I think many of us would probably have lost our minds. If we didn't have hope, if we didn't have God, then yes, all the things that we do have, Health, sustain us, but many of us, many people out there, like we like to say, not us, people out there who don't know God, must get to know God. It is our responsibility to help them to get to know God. So Jesus commends the spiritual practices of prayer and fasting and almsgiving when he preaches that sermon on the mount, that quiet sermon that they had told him about. But he also urges us to think about the meaning of the disciplines beyond just the practices. When you fast, wash your face and do your hair. When you pray, pray in secret. When you give, do it simply and quietly. I don't need to know. In fact, I don't know who pledges what. That is not my business. I'm the minister of this church, and that is how it should be. 
but I got that is not my role. When you play, play, we play passively. Some people come forward and ask for play, others prefer to play in the quiet of their own rooms, of their own homes. When you give, you would see we don't have to put this on social media that we can't feed people or that we don't have kids to a charity. Because God knows no one else needs to know. Because no one else is going to bless us and sustain us like God will. This is the fast that God desires. This is the reason for practicing the discipline of men to return to the sort of life that God has wanted for God's people. It shouldn't only be about 40 days or about looking forward to having the last chocolate to get up for the 40, for the next 40 days. God has always wanted this life for us. We have conducted what God has prepared for us. This isn't about carving ourselves, carving out a perfect life for us because we want to be disciplined and good and have people see that because we think that this is where we will store up the treasures. Right? It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. You can give and you can do, but if your heart is not in the right place, God will see right through that. God sees right through that. Some of us may be confused by it, but God sees right through that. So none of us can buy our way into heaven. None of us can do that. And that is not what God is asking for. God is asking for us to do some real work on ourselves, and by doing so, we do that. We shine the light. We shine the light that this world so desperately needs. So, let us keep a faithful fast together, whether you're going to be fasting or not, whether you are going to be giving anything up or not. Let's keep a faithful fast together as we journey towards the three great days of the Friday and of the Saturday. And I pray that the next return will be fruitful, that it will be a time of real reflection and a time of deep listening to the still voice of God and what God requires of you as individuals and of us as a church community. Amen. seated as we pray. Dear friends in Christ, at the Christian Passover we celebrate year by year our redemption through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Since early days the church has kept the season of Lent as a time of preparation for Easter. We begin Lent by remembering the need for repentance. So let us ask God our Father to bless his ashes to our lips that have been made from the palms with which we greeted Christ the King with joy last Palm Sunday. They are a sign that we mean to prepare ourselves with penitence for Easter. Lord, bless these ashes to our lips and grant that as they may remind us of our, of our mortality and of our need of repentance so that we may keep Lent faithfully in preparation for the joy of Easter. We ask this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you will return. I'm going to ask you to come forward, and we'll go around the sanctuary, and I will place the ashes on you. Turn to the Lord with all your heart, <coughs> the past in ashes, and turn to God 
God with tears and fasting, for he is slow to anger and ready to forgive. Let us pray. God our Father, we praise you that you are always ready to forgive the penitent. Bring us by your Spirit to true repentance and the joy of knowing your forgiveness. Accept through Jesus Christ our Lent and act of love and sacrifice and prepare us to celebrate his Passover and to share his risen life. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we pray for your church throughout the world, for Pablo, our Metropolitan, and in this diocese, for Joshua, the clergy, and the people. Free us from dependence on material goods and the worship of power, and from all that hinders our union with you. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father, we pray for our country and for all in authority. Purge our land of all that is contrary to your will. Bring us all to know Christ as the way, the truth, and the life, that we may live in harmony with one another. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father, we pray for all who suffer, and especially for victims of greed and violence. May your love known to them and to those who cause suffering. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Gracious God, we commend to your loving care all who will die during Lent. Bring them and all the departed through the passion and death of your Son to share in the glory of his resurrection. We offer these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Stand for peace. Being justified by faith, we are at peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. May the peace of the Lord be with you always.
wrote it and there is his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave it thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross and proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. As we look for his coming in glory, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect sacrifice. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. In the language of our choice, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Amen. Amen.
sent me a message to say that the best of all come back clear. So she just needs to rest now. She'll be back after Easter. Uh, Mark is not well. I know Mark's always praying for you and visiting you and how to take care of you. I would ask for your prayers for Mark. Um, for him as well. I don't have all the details except, and you don't need all the details except to keep on in your prayers and to pray for um, a speedy recovery and to give him space. Please don't do it. Please don't do it. I know, he, I know he's coming, but please don't have to leave <laughs> <laughs> if it's not necessary. Right, then we'll let you stand. Happy birthday, JC. I know you probably shut to shy to come up. We hope that you enjoyed your 21st mm -hmm. and congratulations to your mom and dad. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those whom you love this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.